All right, so a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. If you pulled the code from the GitHub or at least looked at the GitHub, on accounts models, we don't have the settings imported, so django.conf import settings. We haven't actually imported that. Um, it's just a little error that must have been removed before it was actually added to GitHub, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew about it. And the other one is signals.py. Now, if we actually ran a login and tested this receiver function out, we would see that it doesn't work. So let's just try it out, print something. And going into Chrome, I log out of my app, log in again, and inside of my terminal, I should see something, like it should print out something, right? But it's not. And that's because Django is not gonna treat the signals file as anything other than a regular Python file. So it's not gonna read through it to look to see if there's a signal that it needs to connect. It's a simple fix. It's one that we just forgot to mention in the last one. And that's in init.py, we just import signals. And now it's absolutely gonna work. So if I go ahead and try it out, log out, and then log in again. Now my signal is actually going through and it says something so we can even test it even further to make sure that we've got a user stripe ID. So user.userstripe.stripe ID. We can even print that out instead of something. And try that one more time. Log in. And now we see the Stripe ID. Okay, so perfect. So now the signal's actually working. So when a new user logs in, or at least a customer that does not have a Stripe ID, then we will actually create one for them. Um, so what we want to do too is Stripe ID, um, if we look at the accounts here, if it's created, if this model is created, it's definitely going to be there. So this will run an exception if it's not there. As we've talked about before, user Stripe does not exist, then it runs this exception. If there's something else, then there's something else. And we can just pass on that case. Um, all right, so now that we've got our signals working and our models back up and working, uh, it's time to actually get into starting to actually make a login and log out information for our site. Right, so if we go into our project right now, we need to have like an account page where they can, or at least a drop down where they can log in and log out. So the very first thing we're going to do is a very simple log out button. And what we're going to do is open up our account views. So let's close out these other files. We just need views right now. And I'm going to do from Django dot contrib dot off import logout while I'm at it I might as well import login and authenticate which are things that we will work on shortly but logout is a fairly straightforward um, function that we will use in our view so I'll just do define I'll call this the logout view and it takes in a request and it's just gonna log out and then we want it to actually like return some render to response or actually a redirect. So what we're gonna do is actually do a redirect in here and I'll do an HTTP response redirect. And for now, I'm just gonna do return and I'm gonna have it go home. So using that slash will make it go to the home page. So all this logout view does is log out. Now you don't want to call it logout itself, the view itself, because it'll conflict with the logout that we're importing. So that is, if you called it logout, you're gonna run into some errors here because it's two different or it's two functions that are doing the uh, uh, that are called the same thing but are doing different things. So we call it a logout view. Now in our URLs. All we're going to do is add a logout um, link for it, and I'll just do URL R and accounts logout slash with the dollar sign. Oops, in here, and it's going to be an accounts going to our view function accounts .views .logout view and we'll give it a name of off logout. 
So of course that's our URL name. All right, so now that we've got this, we can actually test this out. So let's grab this auth blog out. We'll go in our templates here, go into our nav bar, and I'm just gonna create a new link specifically for logout. Eventually we'll have it where it has something for this dropdown, but for now we're just gonna use it as a list element. So href equals to URL auth logout, because we just named it that, and we'll just call it logout. All right, so what's gonna happen here is once we click on logout, it's gonna take us to the home page. So let's actually go into our app, do a little refresh here. Now we have this logout. So let's actually move to a different page that's not our home page. So let's look at the t-shirt product, we click on logout, and it says logout takes exactly one argument, zero given. That's because we needed to add one more thing, which is if we go into our views, we do actually have to use the request just like our logout view. So it actually logs out of the request. That was the one error. So let's go back to our t-shirt, did a little refresh here, hit log out. And now as you see, we are actually logged out and I can do that one more time. Say print logging out. And of course we could also use a logged out signal so we have user logged in. We can also use a user logged out signal um, if we wanted to do something after they logged out, such as like send them an email, thanks for visiting. I don't know why you would do that specifically, but you could also say that you could send this email to yourself or something like that. Um, all right, so now that we have this, let's just go ahead and test it out. Of course, the only way we can log in right now is by going into admin, log in, log out. Oops, we wanna log in, we wanna stay logged in, all right. And now going back, we see logouts there again. Click on t-shirt again, log out, and logging out. That's how simple logging out is. So the next couple, we are gonna be doing a login as well as creating a user. Logging in is a lot easier than creating a user. However, it is still a little challenging because there's a few things that we'll need to do uh, when we actually log in, uh, such as checking their password, and also making sure that the user, there's only one of those users, some, a few different things here and there. Um, so we'll see what that's like in the next one.